Hello everyone and welcome back to Relative Security. This is another video where we are going to talk about specifically different terminologies that are used around defensive and detective uh, solutions, detection solutions uh, when it comes to computer security. So the there are different terminologies that are confusing EDR, MDR, XDR, EPP, these kind of things. So, but we will start from the very basic from it started just to build up the story so that when we reach the EDR or the EPP or these kind of terminologies, we have the basic understanding and we can relate to things and make a comprehensive understanding of what it is. So when the computers began, um, so did the viruses came. As the viruses came, the relevant stakeholders in the industry, in the academia, they all started to work on the antiviruses. So what is an antivirus? That is our first topic that we're going to discuss today. So it's a kind of a software that is used to prevent, scan, detect, and delete viruses from a computer. As simple as that. How does it work? It's a very basic entity. How does a kind of a software knows where thousands of files are present on the machine that which one is malicious and which one is not? How do they work? So basically when you install the antivirus, it begins operating by checking the computer programs and files against a known set or a database of known malwares. Now the malware, now these are continuously updating. Hackers are working, bad guys are working. They are daily deploying new viruses to the systems. So does the database of the antivirus keeps on updating. But how exactly do they work? Well, when they detect a malicious file, how they categorize a file as a malicious, we will come to that. The malicious file or the potential malicious file is quarantined. Now we are very much familiar to the term quarantine thanks to the COVID-19 that anybody who gets infected has to quarantine so that the infection doesn't spread. Similarly, the antivirus solutions pick up a potential infected file and quarantine it to some specific folder so that it does not spread across the whole endpoint. So how does the object gets quarantined? The code of an object or the file that has been categorized as malicious must be resembling to a known threat. Could be partially different, but some part of it is resembling a known threat. Or, this, or the sequence of actions that any specific file has done, they might be related to some known pattern of attack. So that is how your files get detected, scanned, and then put into the quarantine. Now there are different techniques that we're going to talk about, which are used by the antiviruses. Specific detection, generic detection, and heuristic detection. So the specific detection is quite straightforward. It looks for known malware by a specific set of characteristics. Each malware has its own code to do its own specific behavior, and that creates a signature. Now, if you have the signature, if you have the hash, or if you have that particular set of patterns that can specifically identify a known malware, that is how antivirus keeps the database updated, checks those specific characteristics against that specific file that it is examining. And it will say, okay, this particular file, due to this specific detection, due to this match with my database, I'm going to quarantine this one. Now, generic detection is, for example, if the virus maker has write, written a piece of code, but he knows that the antivirus now knows my signature. He will change the code of that particular virus. Uh, 
Now, since the code has been changed, so does the hash of that particular file. So what antivirus does is, it keeps a track of specific detected files, their codes, and then finds similar or near similar codes to that particular code, known code base. If they are the codes of two different files are resembling, it will mark them as a family of viruses that have the same specific code. So it will define the generic generic of that particular family of the viruses. So two, specific detection, generic detection. The last one is heuristic detection. That is where it will keep on looking at the suspicious behavior that is coming out of that particular file or goes into the details of the file structures, how the file has been structured, how the file is, what kind of data is being stored in different parts of the file. That is what your antivirus is doing. So the next natural thing comes up is endpoint protection platforms. They are one step above the antiviruses. So the endpoint protection platforms, they aim to prevent traditional threats that we discussed in the antivirus, like known malwares or advanced threats like fileless, fileless attacks, ransomware, and zero-day vulnerabilities. Now, antiviruses did a good job while they were matching the signatures and everything. They checked the basic structure of the file also. But when it comes to the advancements that we are seeing on the hackers or on the dark side of the uh, internet, the things are moving pretty fast. So endpoint protection platforms, they will cover those traditional threats like known malware plus advanced threats that we are. The different techniques that you're using are signature matching, sandboxing, behavior analysis, static analysis, and then they have the capability to allow and deny particular files in different folders or in different environments. This is preventative. Uh, keep in mind, this is not respond, responding to any vulnerabilities other than it is preventing it from executing. So the signature matching, as we know, it detects threats using known malware signatures, sandboxing, puts the file in some XYZ box um, in an environment where it's executed, checks the behavior, artifacts, collects the artifacts and says, okay, what is the nature of that particular file? Behavior analysis, determining the baseline of endpoint behavior, identify the behavior anomalies, checks that, okay, this, um, this is something that is not akin to this particular endpoint. This is not known to this endpoint, but now it has started to happen. Furthermore, static analysis will analyze the binaries, searching for malicious, malicious character, characteristics sorry, before execution of any other machine learning algorithms. And then you can specify the access of any executable for, from any folder or by connecting or permitting any access to the specific IP addresses or URLs. So one thing, for example, just to get into the, how does this move from signature to checking the techniques, for example, the fileless attacks or ransom attacks, what EPP is doing in addition to what antivirus does is that it is looking at the techniques that are being used by the attackers. For example, when any executable is going to start executing on your endpoint. The agent of the EPP, endpoint protection platform, is going to inject itself into that process. By injecting, I mean it's going to attach itself to that process. Now, if the process tries to execute any of the core techniques that are associated with any of the attacks, or it tries to exploit any vulnerability, that process, the agent, the endpoint protection platform is going to identify that technique, is going to identify that, okay, 
this process is trying to exploit a known vulnerability. It's trying to do something that is not normal for this process. That agent is going to prevent that process from executing at all. So this is how the endpoint protection is working. Simple. It gets attached to the process, injects itself with that, and checks the techniques and maps it with the, with the known database of their own core attack techniques. If it finds a match, what the process is doing and what's, what the attack technique in, in its own database, it will stop that execution of that particular binary. Now, in the anti antivirus, it was mainly around the signatures and the file structure. But for the endpoint protection platform, we saw that the capabilities of antivirus, plus it's also looking at the core attack techniques that are associated with the um, cyber attacks. Moving further, we have another solution that's called EDR. Now EDR, according to the Gartner, is a solution that stores endpoint system level behaviors uses various data analytics techniques to detect suspicious system behavior, provides contextual information, blocks malicious activity, and provides remediation suggestions to restore affected systems. When you read this definition, you see that there are lots of functionalities now associated with the EDR, which were not with the EPP, the Endpoint Protection Platform, or the antivirus. Antivirus, just looking at the signatures and structure of that particular file. EPP, looking at how the binary is going to execute. What are the different techniques that are associated with the execution of that particular binary? Are they malicious? If they are, prevent it from the execution, nothing more. But in the case of EDR, it is not only detecting but it is also responding to that attack. In EPP, there was no response other than that it will stop the binary from executing. But with the EDR, you have lots of other data also. For example, it uses different data analytics techniques, plus it provides the contextual information because the EDR is not only collecting the execution of the binaries on your endpoints. It is also collecting your network connections, your file changes, your changes in the registry, along with the process executions. And then definitely it has improved the algorithms. It has improved the uh, machine learning. It has improved um, capabilities to detect the particular incidents based on their own um, uh, data sets or rules in their uh, engine. Now, if you see the difference between the EDR and the EPP is that the EDR involves continuous monitoring and gathering of all the data from your endpoint, whatever is happening on your endpoint, including file executions, modifications, registry changes, and everything. In the case of EPP, that was not the case. So this is, this is where the EDR has an edge and is providing you the diff, the contextual information that you need along with the execution of that particular files. It is active threat detection. The EPP was not active threat detection. Similarly, the response to the incidents is immediate in the case of EDR. In the case of EPP, somebody had to look at the file and do it and check that if the block blockage of that particular file was correct or not. Similarly, it helps you by investigating and contains the breaches that have already occurred and helps your security staff to aggregate event data from endpoints across the enterprise because in EDR, your agents are going to be installed in your whole environment and every EDR is collecting its own set of 
um, um, the file connections, the file executions, network connections, changes from all the uh, environment. So if you have observed something in any one of the endpoints, you can check in rest of the environment using your EDR management server that if same behavior is being observed in other systems as well or not. That is like quick remediation, quick investigation across all environment. So now if you summarize this thing, antivirus, EPP, and EDR, everything is associated with an endpoint. But the thing is, the attacker is not going to stay on your endpoint all the time. They are going to move. They are going to move laterally into different endpoints, different solutions that you have deployed in your environment. Also, it is not going to come directly on your endpoint. It may use some techniques where the endpoint is not involved at all. So how do you defend against that? those attacks where the involvement of endpoint is just a part of the whole attack? That is where another terminology that we use is XTR. So XTR is extended detection and response. So it is now collecting and automatically correlating the data across multiple security layers. What does we mean by multiple security layers? For example, you have a solution for your endpoints, EPP or EDR. Then you have some network solution like IDS or IPS. Then you have servers, you have email gateways, or now you have cloud workload as well. So what XDR is going to do is it is going to collect the data from all of those security layers, not only the endpoints. It is also going to collect the data from the network layer, from the your email gateways, from your other servers. And now this allows for faster detection of threats and improved investigation and response time through security analysis. Now imagine if you have a solution like XDR, which is collecting the information from the entire network from the entire range of security solutions that you have deployed, why wouldn't it be faster? Why wouldn't it make it make easier for you to respond to that any threat by quickly investigating from one single platform? So the XDR is basically working on top of your EDR, like it expands on the capabilities that the EDR is providing you by adding more capabilities for the detection and response within the network domain or even the cross domain to protect your entire environment instead of one single endpoint. Now it will include your network applications, endpoints and everything. All of that data coming together within one solution automatically being correlated and providing you with the improved context aware alerts for your investigations. So in this video, we have discussed about antivirus, EPP, EDR, and XDR. So the first thing that from where it started was antivirus, basic detection. Then we have EPP, the endpoint protection platforms, where it is more of a preventive solution. It is preventing the bad files from being executed on your endpoints. Then we have EDR, where it is endpoint detection and response. But now the limitation for the EDR is that just like EPP, it is focusing on one single endpoint. To cover the entire environment, you will have to install the agents on all the endpoints. But still, the focus of the EDR is endpoints single machines. In the case of XDR, you are collecting the information from the entire environment, irrespective of this, that it is an endpoint or a server or a network device. Now this is covering your entire network. I hope this clears everything regarding different terminologies, EDR, EBP, and XDR. Thank you so much for your uh, uh, listening. And we will come back with another video where we will be discussing some more terminologies like same, SOAR, and XDR we will discuss over there also. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe.